Hello. Hey, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining me on my talk on uh, using vGPUs in OpenStack. Um, this is going to be sort of a speed run through a lot of the things I wish I would have known when we first started using uh, or implementing vGPUs for our platform. And so at the end of the talk, there will be a link to download the slides as well as a QR code because there's a lot of stuff in here and we'll be moving pretty quickly. So. Uh, My name is Jacob. I'm the uh, principal engineer for OpenMetal. And at OpenMetal, we are primarily an infrastructure services company. And so our goal is to lower the, the barrier of entry for any size companies to start using OpenStack, Ceph, and any other uh, open source cloud systems. Um, and that includes like using GPUs um, and any other uh, services they need to use. Um, so quickly, what is a vGPU? It's a virtualized portion of a physical GPU, um, similar to like a vCPU, but you can't uh, oversubscribe them like you can for vCPUs. So it allows one or more virtual machines to share a single physical uh, GPU, uh, as well as um, easier to manage resources um, and share them between uh, different uh, and so this talk is primarily going to focus on the NVIDIA side of things. This is the most mature, um, this is the most well-supported. I think uh, AMD and, and Intel will be coming out with something soon, but uh, they're primarily the ones that this is going to be focused on for now. Um, we're going to cover a couple of use cases and examples, um, and when you probably don't want to use vGPUs or they might not make sense, um, as well as some hardware requirements, how to actually configure the BIOS to make things work, um, as well as on the kernel and uh, OS side of things. Um, and then we're going to be setting up the uh, host node, making sure the drivers are set up, um, and then go into actually configuring Nova. And then finally, actually spinning up a vCPU. Uh, so quickly, some use cases. Uh, number one would be like CI or transient tasks, um, where you can spin up an instance from a pre-built image using something that requires like CUDA or optics. And then uh, you can have potentially have multiple persistent workers, um, and then go back through, and once it's torn down, those resources will be available to use again. Uh, the second example will be like rendering or graphical tasks. Um, one thing to, to keep in mind about this is that depending on the GPU you, that you use, um, there are different capabilities. So there's a matrix on the NVIDIA website that goes through uh, which ones can support uh, rendering workloads, which ones are compute only. Um, for open metal, we primarily went with the A100, which is compute only for now. Um, so that's what we're primarily going to cover here. And then when you may not want to use vGPUs, so anything that requires a high amount of VRAM, so like a, a large uh, machine learning training task, um, or other long live applications where you can control uh, everything inside of your application um, easier, uh, as well as uh, like video transcoding. Some of the different uh, flavors that you can use with vGPUs don't include a lot of the, uh, the actual uh, encoding cores. So something to keep in mind when you're looking through if you're trying to implement this yourself. All right, so hardware setup. Obviously, we'll need a uh, GPU that has support for vGPUs. And this is primarily the, uh, the NVIDIA Enterprise series, like the Ampere, the L series, Grid, and some of the RTX 6 and 8000 GPUs. And the BIOS settings are pretty critical here. So uh, this is something that caused me a lot of pain when I was trying to set things up. Um, so there's a list on the right-hand side here of things that we had to do, at least on our, this is on a super micro server. So basically everything that's related to SRIOV and IOMU, as well as all the supporting uh, options there, like ACS, AER. Um, if you, one of the issues I had is if the AER wasn't enabled, I would still get most of the stuff to work, but it would give me very confusing errors, like the IOMMU groups not incrementing. So just keep that in mind to make sure all the, uh, the options are enabled if you're going to try this. All right, and then next, the uh, actual setting up the GPU portion with the driver. Um, on the kernel side of things, you want to make sure IOMMU is enabled. This is usually done through a kernel uh, boot flag for Intel or AMD. Um, and then you don't have to use DKMS, but it definitely makes things easier. And then, of course, you need to actually install the, uh, the host driver. So on the NVIDIA side, this is done through logging into their portal, uh, grabbing the Linux KVM package, which includes all of the different drivers for hosts and guests. Um, you may also need to blacklist the Nuevo driver. Um, 
if you're building like golden images, um, there's a, uh, at least for us, we had to use the no DRM flag. This, it doesn't really matter for, uh, for instances that aren't gonna be using rendering, um, but it makes our build process a lot easier. And then just make sure that the, uh, the associated services are enabled and running once you reboot. And then obviously reboot so you can enable all of your options for IOMMU and the drivers. Um, after that, once you come back up, there is this command, the SRIOV manage. Um, way that we do it for our customers is we just put this inside of a, a systemd uh, one-time service that starts up on boot, so it handles that for them. What this does is it spawns all of the virtual functions uh, through SRIOV. You can see in the screenshot over there where, it's, where it shows all of the devices being registered and then the NVIDIA driver actually enabling them. So once that's done, you should be able to check it um, using, uh, you should see 16 or 32, depending on the, uh, the GPU, different virtual functions that pop up in your PCI device list, and you'll see all of those messages through dmessage or wherever your kernel log is going. Um, and then finally, you can look through the, the MDEV types over there, and you can see the different types. This will come up later, because these NVIDIA dash, whatever numbers, what we're gonna be using with Nova to actually uh, spawn up the vGPUs. All right, and we'll quickly cover some of the vGPU profiles. Um, so there's primarily two types, uh, the temporal or time-shared, as well as MIG. Um, time-shared has a slight benefit in that it can, uh, it supports more different uh, types of workloads, so it supports rendering as well as compute and a few other things. Uh, the downside, though, is that if you have multiple uh, users using that system, they could potentially see uh, differing amounts of, um, you know, uh, it, it's not going to be a consistent experience for them, whereas MIG, they get dedicated resources as well as dedicated uh, paths on the hardware. Um, so they are different profiles for each, depending on what you want to use. The right-hand side of the screen has, like, this huge matrix. This, I think this is just for the A100. Um, so it's, it can be pretty uh, daunting to try and figure out which profile you want to use, you can see some of it through the NVIDIA SMI tool um, by listing the different profiles, or uh, you can go on the NVIDIA site and they have a huge PDF with all the different profiles for all the different vGPU, or all the different physical GPUs, and it, and it differs depending on your GPU you're using. Um, so in our example here, we're going to use a A100-3-20, which I believe is 3 gigs and then 20 compute units. Um, and so these are just the commands to enable MIG, which you have to do every time the machine starts up or the GPU is reset. So that's something to take into account. Um, and then just some commands to list out the profiles and create them. All right, and then finally configuring Nova. This step is pretty straightforward once everything else is set up. Um, so I mentioned the, uh, the MDEV uh, pass earlier, so you just want to, the easiest way is just to look through there and find, or grep through there and find which types have the available instances equals one. Um, there's a grep command that you can do that. You can also use the mdevctl tool, which makes it a little bit easier, um, but basically what you want to do is figure out which one of those NVIDIA dash for whatever numbers uh, has your vGPUs, and then you can put that into Nova. So depending on which, which uh, release of OpenStack you're running, um, Wallaby and Newer will be using the enabled MDEV types, and then Victoria and below will use the vGPU types. Um, so something to keep in mind, depending on which, which uh, release you're running. And then, of course, once you make those changes, um, you know, restart Nova Compute. Um, once that's done, if Nova has detected everything correctly, you should be able to use uh, placement to see uh, any of the different candidates. Um, typically, the, what, I, what I see this do is it'll list out 16 different candidates. I believe for each uh, of the different virtual functions, even though you can't actually use all of those. So I'm not sure if this is a, an issue or not, at least when we tested it on yoga. So um, one way around this is to just set custom traits on the different providers, which is the example that I showed here. We just created a, a custom trait type. Um, and this is also one way you could potentially uh, have different uh, vGPU types on different servers and still create uh, flavor, like. Uh, instance flavors with them and have them provisioned in the correct place. All right, and then finally, uh, provisioning a VM with a vGPU. So once your flavors are done, uh, hopefully your everything is working inside of uh, 
placement with giving you actual uh, candidates for provisioning. Uh, you can finally provision an instance with uh, VGPU resource. And so this is done with the resources uh, colon VGPU. Um, I haven't tested it with multiple VGPUs. I'm not actually sure if that works, but typically we'd use one. Um, you can do this through like your, your uh, images, through your flavors, or just ad hoc, which is being showed here. Um, once that's done, once your VM is up, you would need to install the actual guest driver, and this is a special driver similar to the other one that you, you, you get from the uh, enterprise portal at NVIDIA. And also make sure there's a special uh, daemon that needs to be running for licensing, which I'm not gonna cover here, but essentially there needs to be a license for the type of workload you're running, compute, uh, et cetera. Um, and then uh, essentially that's just configuring a file to point to the web endpoint that it's using. So. Uh, Basically, once that's done, you need to, inside of the, the guest, create the compute instance and then verify it's working. And after that, you should be able to run your, your CUDA or optics or whatever workloads uh, that you need to do. Um, so this, is, this screenshot on the right is just showing this inside of the guest container. And so typically at OpenMetal, what we do is we pre-create these images for the customers and then they can choose that image inside of OpenStack and it'll have the driver and everything else pre-configured for them so it's ready to go. But uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's it. We have a couple minutes to go. This is the this is the link to the uh, the, the slide deck. If you if you need anything from there, as well as the uh, the URL. Um, yeah. Thank you. I think we have a couple minutes. If anybody has any questions. Thank you, guys.